Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I'm gonna cover LinkedIn again, but this time I'm gonna do it as a tool. And that means that we're gonna cover a whole lot of stuff that maybe you know, maybe you didn't know, and there's some tips and tricks that I have just come up with over the last couple of years that have made it more useful of a tool for a day-to-day -day business. So let's go ahead and take a look. LinkedIn, it's your most essential tool. So here is the basic interface of LinkedIn. You can see the bar at the top where you have a search, you have home, my network, jobs, messaging, notifications, and there's my little face with the little me. That's my profile. On the face right here, you can start a post if you enter something in the top box. Over on the left, over here, there is a picture of me, and if you click on it, it'll go into a profile. There's also some easy to use statistics right here. We'll go over those in a little bit. And then this right here is your feed, right in the middle. Your feed is a bunch of posts based on your network. We'll go over that too. And over here on the left, you can see under my pages, there's Phoebe Medical and Phoebe Services. Those are all things that I'm affiliated with. And down below that is some other important posts. Some of those can be very cool in case you got events coming up, like you can see here, stuff that I might have missed. And then over on the right hand side over here, these are all my messages with all my various connections. Now, the first thing you're going to do when you create a profile is you're gonna fill in all your information and here is something that I wanna point out to people, the headline. The headline, you'll see right over here underneath my name on the main page, the headline is what everybody sees. It's like your catchphrase. But for me, I put that I'm affiliated with the Better Biomed YouTube channel. And then notice that there's a second little piece after that that says, don't be shy, click the connect button. The crazy part is, when I put this little phrase right here at the end, the amount of passive connects I get, which are when other people click on connect for me, has doubled or tripled. It's amazing. This little phrase right here, reminding people to click the connect button, has actually made a tangible difference. So right here, I'm back on my feed and my main page. You can see right underneath my name over here, it's the catchphrase, which is your headline. And then underneath that, you can notice it says, don't be shy, click the connect button. You wanna make something special right here, something that really kind of shows something about yourself and it's going to be the thing that kind of lures people in. Right underneath it, you can see it says, who's viewed your profile and impressions on your post. Who's viewed your profile are actually people that have clicked on your post and read it within the last, I don't know, week to 30 days. I have no idea how long this has been, but it doesn't matter. Higher the number equals better, right? Right underneath that is impressions of your post. Now an impression of your post is how many people have actually viewed your post. They haven't actually clicked on your post, but this number right here refers to the amount of people that have seen what you posted. Probably in passing, they might've just scrolled by it, they didn't click on it, but Sometimes your post just has to be seen. If it's an advertisement or just a post about your company, that number right there is all that really matters. The fact that I had 16,000, almost 17,000 people view my post is actually pretty impressive. Now, one of the other things I wanna point out to you guys is that right here, you can see somebody else's post. I have no idea who this guy is. I have no idea who this guy is, Brandon Moore, but right underneath my orange arrow, you can see that Wade Myers, a buddy of mine, he celebrates this. In other words, down here at the bottom, he actually clicked that he likes this post. And since he clicked it, now I can see Brandon Moore's post about somebody else, which is the crazy part about LinkedIn. And the crazy part is, is that you can see people that are outside your network by having a larger network. You see more posts and vice versa. It's a bi-directional communication LinkedIn. If you have a bigger network, other people see your post, and when people click on like, or they reshare the post, everybody in their network sees it. And you'll see right here at the end of Brandon Moore's, you can see that he's my third plus connection. We'll go over that a little bit later. I have a illustration of the different levels of connections, but all that matters is that somebody in my network liked this post, 
And because of that, now I see it. I have no idea who these people are, and it doesn't matter. You can see down here, quite a few other people have liked this post, and many people have commented on it, which means this could potentially have been seen by 20, 30,000 people. How about that for networking? So if you click on your photo or up on your name, on your main page, it takes you into your profile. And when you go into your profile, there are some statistics that you should really pay attention to because these are how you gauge your performance on LinkedIn. So you can see right here, I've got 4,013 followers. I've got 500 plus connections. We'll go over that a little bit later. You can see I do have contact info up there, although I'm not really sure what I have posted in there, maybe just my email. Um, you can see over here on the right hand side that my job, I am with the Better Biomed YouTube channel and underneath you can see the school, my DOD BMET school. But the other thing that I want you guys to pay attention to down here at the bottom are the analytics. The analytics help you gauge your performance. You can see I've had 1,237 profile views. I've had almost 17,000 post impressions. And you can see over here on the right hand side, I have had almost 300 people search for me on LinkedIn, which that means a very good number because the more people that are searching for you means that more people are trying to find you or the content that you create. And let's say I click right here on connections. You'll see that there is actually a very big difference between the amount of followers you have and the amount of connections you have. Your connections are people in your network. Followers are the people that like what you post and they're following your post. They might not be in your network, which is another reason why I said don't be shy, click the connect button, because generally you probably want these two numbers to be closer together. If you have a lot more followers than you have connections, that's automatically telling you that you don't have a lot of people that are connecting. So I want to tell people, go ahead, click that connect button, let's do this. So let's take a look at what happens when I click the 500 plus connections right here, which will bring you to a list of all my connections. Okay, you can see up here at the top, you don't have a specific number. After a certain point, they kind of just give up. You'll see various numbers, but here is an important part. You have this message button right here. So all these people in my network, I can contact them if there's anything I need, which is pretty impressive because LinkedIn is the number one resource in the world when it comes to people and people are power, people are knowledge. So you want more people in your network so that they can see what you have to say and more importantly, so you can see what they have to say. And you can see on this list, I've got instructors for biomed, I've got regular biomeds, I've got clinical engineering managers, I've got hardware design engineers for medical equipment, I've got CEOs of companies, I've got medical doctors, I've got all the above in my network and it is amazing. At the very top, it says about 3,400 people in my network. It's, it's higher than that. We'll go over that later. There's, there's a more specific number, but this is just to give you a quick overview of what it looks like when you go into your network to take a look at who's really connected to you. So this page right here, I went and I clicked on my network, which is at the very top of the page on your profile. And when you go in there, there are some different categories that you can research. Right here you see people you may know with similar roles, which is pretty good. Now this is across the entire United States and it is not very accurate. So although you might get some, some people here that you don't have in your network, it's probably not the most reliable way of searching for people. We'll go into that in just a minute. If you are looking for people that are local to your area, this is also a pretty interesting place to go. You will get people, you can see I've got nurses and I've got all sorts of other types of people that aren't necessarily in the field that I'm looking for, but maybe I want those people in my network too. See, the thing is, is the larger the variety of people in your network, the chances of you actually getting answers and sharing information that is applicable, it goes up extremely high. So you wanna build your network and this is one way to do it, although, like I said up here, it's not the best way. We'll go over a much more practical way of building your network quickly. So over here, you can see I have connections. So these are my network. And you can tell by that last page, it said about 3,400. No, no, no. Uh, it would be closer if it said 3,700. 
all right? Because I've got 3669. That's an actual number at the time of recording. It's it's going up like constantly. But underneath that are the contacts. I generally don't care about the contacts. I usually just care about the connections. You can see I've got various groups and events and stuff. You can click on all these. They are hyperlinks. And when you go into those, you can sort people much more effectively. Let's go ahead and let's go and do an actual search. So if I'm doing an actual search, I'm going to search for a key term. And you can see I searched at the top for Biomed Manager and it gives me all sorts of data. Again, the big key to LinkedIn is sorting your search appropriately. So since I'm trying to add to my network, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. This is actually a button. You click on it and it will bring up a whole list of people that fall in this category because it's gonna be right here in their job title, usually. You see, I've got several of them pending. I probably have hundreds of pendings. And you have to understand that not everybody logs into LinkedIn. Not everybody wants you in their network. Although, why would you join a social media site if you don't want to enhance your network? I don't understand it, but you know, everybody's different. Everybody's got a preference. I generally, if somebody clicks on uh, connect to me, I'm gonna connect with them immediately just because I also wanna see what they have to say. We can click on this right here and we can go into a list of people and we can start building our network. So once we go into that list of people, now we can sort it based on location. We can base on your connections, the depth of connections. You can sort on their company that they're associated with. There's so many criteria in here. We'll go over a few of them. Why would you want locations? Well, this is one of them that I use very often. Let's say I've got a show coming up in Indiana on the 14th, which I do. I will click on Indiana and I will search for biomeds in Indiana because I want to attract as many people in that location as possible a month or two before I ever get to that event because that's how you're gonna be more effective at communicating when you get on site. So here you can see I have Texas highlighted because I reside in Texas. I generally want to have a large, large network in Texas, but every time I go to a show or if I'm visiting, traveling, anytime I'm going to meet other biomeds, I will generally search for biomeds in that location ahead of time. So here is a couple different pieces of information I want to share with you guys. When you are searching, you have first level, second level, and third level connections, and we will explain those in a little bit. But also you can see that there's different statuses over here on potential candidates for your network. You can see it says message, pending, and connect. I already explained I have hundreds of pending and that's, there's a variety of reasons for that. But what you should notice is that there are several of them that say connect. And connect is probably the most important one that you want. The ones that say message often are people that don't wanna connect with people. Or they're outside of my network, which means Generally, you have to expand your network in order to be able to include these people, but sometimes message means that they're already in your network. So if I want people outside of my network, I will generally click on second or third, which you can see right here, he's a third connection. And over here, you can see that these are second connections. But when I'm going through and I'm adding people to my network, what I do is I read their name, I read their title and their location and their previous right here. So based on their qualifications, which would be their title, I can tell if they're a biomed or if they're certified facilities guys or if they're a biomed manager or if they're an MBA or whatever. You read all about the person and then you decide if you want them in your network. You're gonna get a variety of people who might not be biomeds, they might not be anything that you're looking for. Be sure that you read their data before you click connect because you only get 100 connections per week. 100 connection requests, that is. People can passively connect to you, but when you are going out there and you are clicking on connects and sending connect requests, you're only allowed 100 per week. So right here, you can see I've modified. I've got second and third connection requests, and then you click show results, and this will bring up people that are not in your immediate network. So generally speaking, Everybody here that's got to connect, like Mr. Russell Atkins, that is fair game. 
I will click on that and I will try to get him in my network, especially since he's a senior level biomed. He's at Baylor Scott, a very reputable hospital. And you can see right here, it says he's a manager at Baylor Scott which I would love to be able to talk with him. And I would love to hear what he has to say about his locality right there, which is Dallas. So let's talk a little bit about LinkedIn's networking model because it's really interesting. And at the same time, it can be very confusing. A first degree connection are people that you're directly connected to because you've accepted their invite to connect or they've accepted your invite to connect. You'll see a first degree icon next to their name in the search results next to their profile. You can contact them by sending a message on LinkedIn. Here you can see I've got four stars in my network. And let's say that every star equals one person in my network. And you can see this guy over here, or girl, has a very much larger network than me. Normally, if I'm over here and I'm posting things, the only people that are normally gonna see it are the people that are in my network, or, people that are in somebody else's network. If they like your post, then all these people that are in their network, they'll see your post as well. If they comment on your post, all these people will see their comment on your post and so on and so on. This is a first degree connection. Next, let's go to a second degree connection. So we're digging deeper. And in reality, these circles would be overlapping and you would have all these stars in the overlapping. It'd be like a giant Venn diagram but this is how I'm gonna explain it to you guys because this is kinda of how LinkedIn explains it. So you can see I've got my network with four stars. I've got this guy here or girl with a much larger network and then you can see they're connected to this person over here which is a second degree. The second degree is not in my network but if this person in the middle clicks on my post, likes it or whatever, then this person over here is gonna see it and if they like it, then all their people are gonna see it. Even though they're not directly connected to me, all these people, so you're talking, I've only got four people in my network, I could have 10,000 people out here that see my post because this person right here liked it or whatever. So you can automatically see, the larger the network, the more potential other people are to see your post. So LinkedIn defines the second degree as people who are connected to your first degree connections. You'll see a second degree icon next to their name in the search results, yada, yada. And you can still contact them through in-mail or to make an introduction. These people right here, you generally can't see their post. They cannot see your post unless somebody in the middle likes, comments, whatever, and then they can see it. So that brings us to third degree. Now, it only really goes up to third degree connections because by this time, you could be easily a thousand people out from your initial connection. Third degree is people who are connected to your second degree connections. You'll see a third degree, uh, you get it, okay? It'll say three plus next to their name. That means that these guys are not in your network. I generally try and ring these people in because if they're third degree, that means that this guy doesn't have them. None of these people here in my network have this guy in their network. So I try and select third degree, bring them back into the loop. Now here is where it all comes together. LinkedIn out of network. Now I've gotten this message many times, especially when I was first starting to build my network. I couldn't comment on people's posts and stuff because they're outside of my network. You can see all these stars right here. I've only got three stars in my network. Each of these equals a person. This is why you wanna grow a bigger network because as soon as I make this connection with this person, now I bring in all these other stars right here and they can potentially see my posts and I can potentially see their posts, which is probably more important if you're trying to stay up to date on what's going on in an industry. You wanna find these guys right here, which I call the whales, and you wanna find them, and then you wanna try and bring them into your network so that you can see how this progresses. So LinkedIn members who fall outside the categories listed above, you can still directly contact them with in-mail, although it's not gonna be that easy, and they're probably gonna be like, who is this dude? or girl, they're not gonna reply. Out of network, that's why we try and build a bigger network because then we can bring all these guys in to see the total picture. Let's go back to this slide where I showed you I selected second and third degree. Now you know why I do my personnel search with second and third degree. 
because these are people that are outside of my network entirely and I want to try and bring them in. So I will routinely scan through second and third degree connections and you can see how many pendings I got here. Eventually this little connect button is going to get rarer and rarer. As it gets rarer, mind you, you only have 100 connect requests per week and you have to spend them wisely. So you want to generally get the connections that are going to pay off the best. What do you do once you find somebody you want to connect to? Like let's say Mr. Russell Adkins right here. If I connect, then this is what pops up. You can see it says add a note or I can just send. And if I click send, it's just going to show a picture of me along with my headline that says this person would like to connect to you. I like to add a note. So you can see here there's a little button and then I type in a note. So this right here is a regular introduction that I give to many people because I see that it is probably the most effective. And it goes as follows. I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Justin Barber, the host of the Better Biomed YouTube channel and the new VP of Business Development at Phoebe Medical. Feel free to contact me anytime if you want to chat biomed or if you need some technical assistance. And then I put my website down at the very bottom, betterbiomed.com. I found that this is a very effective means of communication because I do have people that chat. They contact me all the time. They just want to chat or they ask me questions. Sometimes they're looking for help finding jobs. Doesn't really matter. I will sit there and I will do my absolute best to uh, chat them up, talk to them, and interact because I meet some really fascinating people. I add this note, then you click on send, and then often what happens is they will write back. Like right here, you can see Noah. He wrote back and said, hi, Justin. And I said, hi, Noah. And he said, thanks for connecting. And I said, absolutely, thanks to you too. So we have a little bit of communication that goes back and forth with so many of these posts. But one of the things I want you to know is that the people that respond back and actually write you back, they are generally going to be very successful in any career field because they know how effective communication is. It's all about getting people to communicate and to interact with you. So when they write back, I will easily take the time to write back to them. And then again, I respond and tell them, hey, let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Seriously, I, I would love to help. And that's usually the end of the communication. So as you are clicking on people and adding them to your network, there's going to be these little pop-ups that happen and some of them are meant to deter you. Like this one here popped up on my phone, it says nice job building your network. But you can notice down here in the tip, it says if someone you don't know yet, you can follow them, see their updates or email. There's gonna be a variety of messages that these guys are gonna give you. One of them is gonna be like, you're sending a lot of messages or You've sent more connection requests than most, and then it'll say something like, you should only connect with people you know. Well, why would I be on social media if all I want to do is connect to people I know? I, I don't get it, but whatever. There's going to be a variety of these messages, and there's going to be some alerts that tell you you've almost used up your limit, to which, remember, I said there's only 100 per week, so I try to make the absolute best of it. And eventually, you are going to get this message you've reached the weekly invite limit. Now, there's nothing you can do about this. Once you get this, you can't click on nothing, you can't deselect people. Once you got it, you got it. That's it, you're capped out, 100 per week. That's why I tell everybody, you have to be as effective as possible with the 100 you got, and be diligent to spend your 100 every single week because they do not roll over. So spend them, and then go on to the next week. So here is a more effective means of building a network. With permission, I use Miss Enid's uh, profile here because she is very effective. You can see down here, she makes regular social media posts. She's also very effective at expanding her network. And because of that, because she knows a lot of people in this industry, I will sometimes click on her connections and you can have access to her connections, which you can see right here. Look at the top. I'm searching people. I'm searching too deep. In other words, I'm looking at people who are not currently in my network and I'm searching in Enid's connection list. And you can see right here, I've sent connect requests to a bunch of them. Again, she has some very important people in her connection group. And that's because she's a sales rep. So here's the thing about finding the correct people to follow and to go through their networks. Certain people like sales rep will have 
other people that you might not really care about. If you're looking for connections in Dallas, I'm gonna find somebody that's in Dallas and I'll go through their connections because local biomeds know other local people and that way there you save your own time and energy by going through somebody else's list based on the type of person they are, you can better select candidates to be part of your connection request. Remember, you only have 100 per week, so let's spend them wisely. So if I wanted some very important people in the industry, I would easily go through her list right here and I would be selecting some of these people. So that just shows you. Now my list is mainly comprised of biomeds. Her list comprises of executives of companies and executives of hospitals and stuff because she's a sales rep. But sales reps are very effective people, people, people. <laughs> so you wanna go through their list because they will have an, a curated list of people that they know from certain regions. So that's another important thing. Your sales reps will have people in certain regions. So go ahead and take a look through some of their, some of their contacts and uh, add them to your list if that's the region that you're trying to get into. So here is an important piece of information. You do only get 100 per week, but that resets every single Saturday at 8 p.m., and I am here on a Sunday recording this, and I'll tell you right now, I am already full for this upcoming week because I've already spent my Sunday morning over a cup of coffee going through the list and adding people to my network. Why do you want to add people to your network? Let's get back to that. Posts equal profile views, which equals more connections. See, the thing is, is there are active connection requests, which are the ones that you send out for other people, and then there's passive ones, which are people that are viewing your profile, maybe because of some posts that you made, and they click and they select you to be one of their connection requests, which is so cool because that means that although you have a potential for 100 connection requests, you could get potentially 120 or 130 people in your network for that week. That's a very busy week, though. But you can go over 100 because the other ones are passive, which are people viewing your profile and selecting you to be part of their network. You wanna add more people so that you get more views and more views equal more people. <laughs> you can see a, a trend right here. This is also a very useful metric to see how you're doing on social media. If this trend is going down, you gotta find out why. Is it because of the type of posts that you're making? Maybe you wanna change the content. Always have a positive message in your, in your content because if all you do is try to sell people things, you're gonna see this graph trend go down. Fact, it's gonna happen. When people think that you're trying to get something out of them, they're just going to eventually start hiding your posts and this number is gonna go down. So if you have a positive message and you have something to contribute to the group, you're going to see this graph trend go up. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of social media posts and let's go over why they're effective. Now I'm using Kaylee's post right here because she is a very effective communicator and she always has a positive message. You can see she gets a lot of interaction from people. She uses hashtags up here, which kind of helps simplify, you know, the people that are gonna be viewing her, her post. Now this post here, she's joining up with somebody else. Now this person right here might not have that big of a network, but because Kaylee added her to it, now, Missy Hampton is going to have a lot of people viewing her posts and her profile. So you can see how this is effective. But this is what I really love about her post. She plans out what she's gonna be doing and she shares that with the world and that advanced knowledge actually helps people ahead of time. So you can see her positive message. We enjoyed connecting with customers and helping them with both their service and capital purchasing needs. What a positive message, I absolutely love that. So let's go ahead and take a look at one more thing. This is another post of hers, and she says, on the road again, this week we're picking up equipment in Atlanta, Georgia, customers to send to our Avante Health Solutions Patient Monitoring Repair Depot. So she adds a whole bunch of information up here, not just the hashtags, but she's saying, yes, we repair these monitors right here, but notice how she just shows that she's picking up stuff and leaves a positive message along with a little bit of planning. That is effective communicating, guys. So let's take a look at some other examples. This is Renew Medical. Renew has a very good social media program. 
and they do a lot for the community. And, and in doing so, they always include it in their social media program. So here you can see a post where they're going over some of the people that came to visit their establishment, which is a pretty impressive establishment. But you can see that they're talking about an Amy apprenticeship program. And I really like how they have multiple photos all put together like this. That is an effective communication right here. You can see that they've got 359 followers. You can see other information like this was from three days ago. They get a lot of interaction. Really nice. That's a good post. So here's something. You can share posts about you or about your industry or about your team that are done in things like magazines. Here you can see that they have an apprentice down here and, and they have a photo. I, I clipped it off because I only have so much space. But the important part is, is he's highlighting an existing post and he's actually got some words going on up here. He says, super proud of the youngest biomed apprentice to pass CABT. At Renew, it is, he passed it at 17 years old, which is an achievement. That's pretty impressive. Again, uh, he tagged Jill Taylor, his wife, and he has some hashtags here. But this is an effective use of LinkedIn. You're sharing somebody else's post about your stuff or about something that you really care about, and you're adding your own words. This is effective communication, guys. Here we got a few things going on. This is Surge Slush, and uh, this is Sea Change Surgical. They post about this all the time, and I, I really wish they had a variety of other types of posts about their system because it really is impressive. And uh, what they'll do is they will comment on it so everybody that's in their network sees their comment. And you can see down here, there's a variety of other people that are commenting on it. But I wish they did other uh, photos, maybe even some more videos about how it's, it's um, used. But this is still an effective communication. This is a very good ad. You can see up here that they get the tagline out, Smart Freezer delivers multi-case supply, only Surge Slush. That's their tagline. But if you want to see more, you can click on see more and then you get some more details on it. But they have statistics, they have the website, they've got what it does. That is an effective communication. Even though it's sales, it's still positive and it's still very pleasant to see as it, you go through your feed. I like their coloration because of the amount of blue on this your eyes are gonna to gravitate towards it, it's true. And we go over here, Optimum Biomedical. So here is another example of where somebody who is part of Optimum, they shared Optimum's own post. And up here you can see that they're saying, in one line, Optimum Biomedical is going from strength to strength. The first line catches people and everything else is just supplemental. So here you can see down here, it's again, <laughs> a lot of blue but they have their logo, they have a excerpt, effective communications. I will stop and I will read this if I'm glancing by just because of the layout and I like the circles. <laughs> it's hard to say, but you can see Optimum has 103 followers. This is the thing that you wanna track because as your company has more effective communications, this number will go higher. So if all you're trying to do is sell people all the time, this number up here, the 103 followers, it might not go up very much. If your followers start going up, then you know that your communication is more effective. But overall, this is a very good layout. I really like how they did this, and I like how people that are part of the team are sharing the company's posts because that's how you spread the word. Tony over at ZRG Medical, this is a used medical equipment company. They're widely known, but there's several things that are going on here. You can see he commented on his own post there's a video, videos are very effective. People will stop and play videos. And down here at the bottom, you can see that he has hyperlinks that will make it easier for people to get to your company website. This is very effective. He's got some hyperlinks up at the top, but he's also got them down below. Now, Tony is also pretty good at social media. And he's one of the people that I learned from, just like some of these others that I've showed you. This is a good post. He has a video that as you're scrolling, it starts playing without audio, but I can click on this and all of a sudden now I got my audio. That's a good post. This is good social media. All right, so why do you wanna grow your network? Well, this is a perfect example right here. And so I had a Biomed gathering here in Houston and we got everybody together. We took a photo and then I have all the different hospitals that they're part of. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody and just show that you know we're a tight-knit group out here. So down here at the bottom, you can see this post 
If anything, it was seen by 1,742 people. I'm not trying to sell anything. So Phoebe Medical was actually the sponsors of this event. So Better Biomed, I, I got the bar tab and uh, Phoebe Medical got all the, the snacks and stuff for people. And this was a really good event. You can tell by the atmosphere, everybody's having a good time. So I want to capture the moment and make that a social media post because that's effective communication. It brings positivity to the community. And you can see right here, I've gotten 36 people that have liked it. As I already showed, if somebody likes it, then my post is now visible to their network. So 36 people liking this post, 37 technically, that could be easily three, four, five, six thousand 6,000 people that have seen this post. But you can see at the time that I recorded this, it was only 1,742 views. So it spiders off. And you can see that I shared this also in my network because my network is bigger than 453 followers. If you remember, um, my followers, I've got like 4,000 some. Uh, Phoebe, there, there's it's going up. And you can tell because we're adding these positive posts, we're not trying to sell anything to anybody. Our followership is going up considerably. And you can see I just wrote some notes in there. My voice is almost gone. Uh, thanks to everyone for coming out. What a good event and we had a lot of, a lot of fun. And I've got several people that are replying down here. I wish I could have all the comments. But, you know, just people talking about they wish they were there. Would we do? Would we talk about? This type of interaction is really healthy because it actually makes other people want to be there for the next time, for the next event. Or they might want some contact information for some of the people in the photo or whatever. But comments are always very welcome, just like likes, like these right here. Because if people like it, Obviously, it, the word spreads. Here's another post from Phoebe Medical. Now, we were all sitting around. These are all pizza boxes over here. And we were all just sitting around and we were um, just talking about how the company's growing. And I snuck out and I came over here behind and I snapped a photo of probably, what, one third the people that were there is all I could get in frame because of where I'm standing. But it's a social media post. And I basically just wrote, we're having a group meeting today to introduce our four new employees and update the crew on our company expansion, Q2 of 222, and we're way ahead of growth goals, which we were. And it's absolutely amazing. But these are the type of things people should be capturing. Every time you have a group of people together and you're doing something fantastic, you should be grabbing it and making social media posts. If you're doing a construction project, if you are adding things, like let's say you have a whole bunch of new inventory that comes in, 100, 200 boxes, you should get photos of your technicians or the sales reps in front of the boxes. You know, everybody giving a thumbs up. That's a social media post. Anything that is positive about the company, about you as a person or as a technician, that shows growth, that shows that you are having a positive impact on your community, those are all really effective posts. So I snagged this one and I just wanted to share it with you guys because this is one of those things that people just don't capture. They just think nothing of it. And here's probably one of the most effective uses of using LinkedIn is I have been making posts about people that are looking for jobs. And because my network is really large or I consider it large, I can get the message out there and we get a lot of people that are interacting. You can see I've got a lot of people that like it. So this comment, trying to help somebody find a job, it goes really far out into the network. I've got 10 comments and a lot of these comments are really good comments. They're actually people that are trying to help and they're actually trying to get this person employed with their company. Now I have had people doing like bidding wars in the comments, which is almost crazy. I've had sometimes 30 deep of comments on people that are trying to get the contact info of the people that I'm trying to sponsor and trying to get into some sort of a good position. Now, when I do these posts, I get no money out of it. I get no dollars. But when I do these posts, the quality of the people paying attention, I get executives, I get people that own companies, I get people that are in some pretty impressive power positions that pay attention to my feed because I make these kind of posts. Now this is the kind of post that can really affect people's outcome and it can affect the community in a real positive manner. You can see I had 2,500 plus views of this post. So this person here who probably doesn't have that big of a network by me sharing this little note right here, I, I can find them a position kind of quickly. 
potentially I could have four or 5,000 people view this and that's an easy number. You know, the bigger the network, the more people are gonna view it, but try to use LinkedIn as a positive impact on the community and one of the ways I found to do that effectively is to post people's jobs or let's say job openings with companies because I'm not charging people to use my network to make these posts. It's all you know for the good of the community. So why would you use LinkedIn? The number one reason is LinkedIn is the world's best resource of people. People equals knowledge and opportunities. A larger network always has an advantage over a smaller network. As correctly as possible, we try to make our network as large as possible so that you don't get bino vision or binocular vision of what's going on in the community or in the industry. By enhancing your network to being as broad as possible, you are getting the broadest spectrum of information about the community, which will help you and your business make more effective decisions in the future. Some notes though, guys, girls. Avoid politics on LinkedIn. Please, please avoid politics. LinkedIn remembers everything you do. I can click on somebody's name and I can go through their history and I can see what type of person they are. If you don't have positive message, if you are hateful on your comments, I can see that and I can tell what type of person you are and vice versa. People can see things about me. So I always try and keep a positive message when I'm on LinkedIn. And the very last thing, guys, is offer substance to the community. Now, if you are going to get all these people into your network, have a message. Have something positive to say and offer substance. Don't just be sitting there and trying to sell things to the community because people will unfriend you, you could say. They will ban you from their, from their network or they will just mute your post. An effective way to not get muted and to have as many people as possible view your post is to offer a positive message and mix it up. Don't always try to sell people stuff. So anyway, guys, that's all I got for LinkedIn. Thank you for your time, and I hope you learned something from this. I could easily spend two or three days showing people all the stuff that I do on LinkedIn, but I'm trying to get this into like a 30-minute video just to help you guys out. Now, sales reps, traveling technicians, company executives, people that are looking for jobs, all these people should be using LinkedIn for the tool it is. And if you start using it and you build your network, I promise you, it will change you as a person and it will change you as a professional. Thanks for your time, guys.